Welcome back to the next video in our OCR Creative Our Media Hour Week 1 series and today we're going to look at lighting and sound. So where this might be useful is 100% if you're going to get a storyboard question for Hour Week 1 in your exam then it's more than likely you're going to have to talk about sounds and lighting if you've got a video task that you're talking about. Then you may be using it in a digital animation, especially sound effects and music and things like that. A digital video sequence, definitely writing and uh, lighting in there and um, sound effects. If you're creating a digital game concept, you might talk about the kind of sound effects you may be using in your game. And when you're actually creating the game itself, you're going to be using sounds. You might even have uh, various degrees of lighting depending on your game. Now, some things to consider before we start. Now, I'm going to be going through the basics of lighting and sound, however you don't actually, for the exam, need to know all these various lighting and sound techniques. But if you get a storyboard long answer question, you get marks for lighting types and direction and sound, talking about dialogue, sound effects, ambience, various sounds and music. Now, you have an understanding of what these mean, just allow you to have that little bit of an edge. Now, you're not going to get a mark if you just did in a storyboard question, you just wrote a man's talking for dialogue, there is an explosion in the background, there is some ambient music of some tree, trees twerping in the background, and there is some music uh, played by some. So, you're not going to get five marks of that because you need to have a varying amount of techniques. However, if you can talk about lighting and sound any sort of degree, then you're already getting yourself two marks there, or at least two technical aspects which if you look at my storyboard exam question video, which is in the playlist, uh, which is in the description in case you need a link to that, I discuss how you go about getting the marks for technical aspects in there. Now, why is lighting important in the first place? Lighting creates a visual mood, it's an atmosphere and a sense of meaning for the audience. It helps tell the audience where to look. It looks at what's important and what's not. It reflects the psychology of the characters. So if you think about uh, films such as Joker, which is quite a dark film, Quite a lot of scenes there's not a lot of light and it makes it makes the um, areas and think about batman as well when it's in the think about batman begins when it's in in the sort of slum kind of area of gotham city everything's quite dark and dingy and there's not very much light which sort of shows the psychology that it's not a very nice place to be and it also supports the genre of the film like a sci-fi film quite often has lots of bright light lots of um sort of digital kind of looking places. Like if you look at the picture that's on the slide right now, you can see that there's lots of bright lights, lots, lots of them um, lights that are leading past and things. Whereas if you're looking at a romance kind of film, it's quite often quite soft lighting, quite warm lighting, and it supports the feelings that they want the audience to feel. Now, uh, should you get a question asking the kind of person who deals with lighting, because sometimes in the uh, questions you might get um, might get a question talking about how uh, who might use a script who might use a storyboard if you ever get which is possible if you ever get a question talking about storyboards and says who might be in charge of these things the director so the guy in charge he shares his ideas or her ideas for lighting in the scene then the director of photography works with that director to sort of plan how they can go about doing that and then there's a member of staff called the gaffer who actually works with the crew and actually puts the lights in place and actually brings that idea to life. So it's sort of like a, a chain process from the director. So the director of photography or the uh, cinematographer and then the gaffer then goes ahead and does his stuff and puts the lights in place and then the scene can be filmed. Now there's varying types of lighting direction. So you've got lighting from behind the subject, you've got on camera and to the side. So behind the subject, obviously you have a light behind that person. And although it's, I've got some sort of um, ideas on this slide, it's not an exact science, it's not 100%, it's just you know one example. So a light coming from behind can help thin the edges of brightness and sort of separates your subject from a dark background. So it might be that someone's walking down a dark alley, they put a light behind them, which sort of highlights them in the scene. It might be that um, using to get a silhouette of a subject as well. If you've got the sun behind um, your subjects when you're filming them, usually you can't see those features, you can just see the silhouette and that can be used for dramatic effect as well. Then you've got a lighting direction of on camera, which essentially means you've got either the flash on or behind the person taking the photo there is a light. So that makes sure that um, the person in front, in front of the camera is really bright, you can see everything and 
sort of yeah, you know, sort of highlight their features. And then you've got to the side. So quite often, if you film, if you're in a dark room and you've got a light to one side, obviously one side of your face is going to get lit up. So this is usually sort of used for dramatic effect, and you know, it's sort of if you're trying to shroud um, the subjects in like mystery or mischief, you might only show half their face, or you might even have them wearing like a hood or something and have the light coming through from the top or from another side, which sort of doesn't highlight all their features, which again shows those shadows, which shows the idea of mystery. For some examples here of some side lights, and you can see half of that man's face is missing because uh, the light's coming from those neon signs to his left. The backlight in there shows the sort of the outline of the lady, shows the other silhouette, so again, sort of quite mysterious, and then you've got on camera, which is showing that lady all her features, you can see pretty much all of her face, and it makes her look important. She's the subject of the picture, not the buildings in the background. So next we've got dialogue and sound effects. Now, dialogue is just another word for a conversation that's occurring during your shot or scene. So we usually plan our dialogue in a script, uh, and we can use it in a storyboard, whereas your script should be specific, saying exactly what you want the actors to say. If you're doing a storyboard question, you don't necessarily have to say exactly what the person who's talking needs to say. A storyboard is meant to be a short plan of your scene or shot. So just saying, you know, speaker one, saying part one is absolutely valid because the speaker themselves will have a script or they'll remember the script and know their lines. So the storyboard doesn't have to say, Dave says this and Jim says that and it doesn't have to be as detailed. Now, sound effects are just the various sounds you want to use in your scene. So usually they're recorded separately. You wouldn't necessarily have um, a full scene and have all the things in the background recording. Usually you have your microphone set up to listen to the actors, which you record separately. Then you've got your various sounds and you put them on top. Otherwise, a lot of sounds wouldn't sound that great because if you've got a microphone running to somebody but you're also trying to record a really good explosion in the background, you need to have a microphone near that as well and it wouldn't really work as well. Uh, sometimes people can do that, but quite often, in a lot, in a lot of films, if I'm honest with you, we use stock footage. So you might notice that some explosions, some screams, like the Wilhelm scream, for example, and some sound effects you can hear across various different films that are exactly the same. I quite often, because I'm a bit of a nerd, I pick up on it when I'm watching some films. So you see, just like an explosion like that, somebody unwrapping a wrapper, these are usually recorded separately. Uh, if you think about when someone's fighting in a film, when they're punching and kicking, you know, when you punch something, you sort of get that kind of sound. It doesn't really happen in real life, does it? But it makes it sound a lot more dramatic and makes it sound, you know, a lot better because we've added that on top and sort of adds to the scene a little bit more. Similarly, you can have music and ambience. So music or score for films is really good for directing a mood. Usually if something's trying to be mysterious or scary, it'll be really soft tones and then sort of get more dramatic and usually increase in volume. You know, if you've got a romantic film, you have, you have, you have like nice and soft piano and things like that, and it sort of sets the mood for the film. Now, the actual word ambience is the opposite of silence. It's just the background sound space or location that makes things feel more natural. So people talk in the background maybe, uh, glasses clicking in a bar, bench chirping, or wind blowing. It's all those background noises that we expect which makes the scene seem a lot more real. So you see we've got a little bit of talking, some uh, crickets. And you see that adds a little bit more um, realism. It actually seems like someone's playing some music. It sets the mood of, you know, what I get from that, which was literally, I went onto the YouTube music library, picked two um, sound effects that don't require uh, any crediting or anything like that. And I literally just thought, right, I'll put this together and see what it sounds like. And to me, I sort of got the feeling of maybe somebody's at the park, maybe, um, watching their kids play or something in the background, so the music was sort of quite uplifting, but 
not too happy. You can hear the you know the bears chirping in the background. You could hear the crickets. You could hear the kids like you know playing. And I feel, I feel that sort of brought together a lot of feelings that you'd get to sort of uh, enhance the scene. Should we be filming it now? Bringing it all together. Now I'm not an expert on filmmaking. I've made a couple of films, usually just holiday sort of videos, things like that. They aren't particularly great, but I know for the exam, as I've marked, I've been an examiner for that for three years. Uh, I've taught it for more than uh, more than five years, or it might be five years. And I know that for the exam, if you get a script question, you don't have to be an expert. You don't like look at my picture on the right hand side. I can't draw. But when you're given a storyboard question, you don't have to draw anything, it has to be fantastic. See, I've just got a circle for a head, a very terrible looking hand, and he's holding a phone that doesn't look like a phone. Well then what I've done is I've numbered the scene, which if you, again, if you look at the exam question video I've already created, I go over the technical aspects you need to have. So I've written, I've got some cheerful stock music, a voiceover explaining what's going on, and then I've had lighting behind the camera, so the phone will be lit up and the back of his head will be lit up. Maybe the camera could be here then you can even put like an arrow saying where it's coming from. And then I've used my camera shot, so I've got uh, an over the shoulder shot that zooms into the phone. So already just that alone, I've got the stock cheerful music and the voiceover, that's one. I've got the lighting, that's two. I've got the camera movement for the zoom, that's three. And I've got the over the shoulder shot, that's four. And then I've even got a number of the scene there. So I've actually got five technical aspects. If I could use that consistently for each of my panels, I've even got the timing as well and explaining what's going on. So you can even argue that I've got six or seven technical aspects. If you consistently did that in every single panel and you use all of them every time and it made sense and it matches the scenario, there's nothing stopping you getting 10 marks there for a storyboard question. As, as it says here, it's all about adding some extra features that just gives you that edge and make sure you get those marks. I would make sure you're always going over. You usually need three technical aspects to get the marks, I was, I'd always go for four or five just because you can. So just remember this video when you're in an exam situation, getting those extra things and even just saying, you know, ambient music of children playing in park, that's sound effects, so you can get a mark for that. Hopefully you thought that was good and it helped you and you understood what was going on and you can use that and think about this video when you're doing your storyboard questions. Now, one thing I would do is watch the previous two videos and the storyboard um, exam question then you'll have literally all the information you need for those questions they also cover things like location and things in the storyboard video as well so please subscribe if you enjoyed that and please give it a like and any comments if there's anything extra you want to add on I can always do an amendment video if need be and I will see you in the next video